Hey guys, Pete Clark here for runatonce.com. Today we're going to be reviewing a session sent to me by my friend and student Tall Matt, one of the tallest people I have ever coached, if not the tallest, I believe he's something like six foot five. So let's try to figure out if that's going to help him out today in the 100 zoom pool or whether he's going to need a little bit of critique from yours truly. Let's get into it. Threes under the gun should be a mix. We shouldn't be opening this every time, but we, we can open it sometimes. It's basically break even. Yeah, when we do open threes, calling a three bet's good. This hand is going to be very live when it hits sets, and that's because on a board like 783, under the gun is not going to have, sorry, cutoff is not going to have many combos of sevens or eights because they're far from pure three bets in these positions. Contrast that to later position, this board wouldn't be as good, and thus three's not as live. Um, furthermore, textures where we flop sets are going to be pretty straight free for his range and set free. So, for example, 963, we've only got to worry about nines there. Contrast that to button versus small blind or something where threes actually folds to three bets and in that spot we have to worry about nines and sixes. So we worry about less sets in general. The boards that are around the three like 654 for example are better for us than they would be in late position because Villain doesn't have fours, fives or sixes here. So yeah, um, early pairs do go up in value a little bit in early position when, when you're three bet. Not that they go up by being three bet, that would be ridiculous, but they're better compared with what they would be in late position. Against half pot here, I think this is one of these flops you can build a raising range. You don't need to be raising 4x and you're snap raising 4x again. Would you be snap raising 4x with bluffs? This seems suspiciously just trigger happy. I think Matt could do with just calming down when he's playing and just taking his time and breathing. I don't know what the deal is with like having to click things instantly, but that's not what good poker is. Like you don't like when I play a session, for example, I really take my time. I think what's my strategy here? What hands will I be raising? What sizing will my range deploy? How often will my, my will my hand slow play? And yeah, threes probably doesn't slow play um, this hand specifically because it does unblock some combos of rare combos of 8-7, naked pair of 8s, like 9-8, eight, etc. Ace-8 eight suited. Pocket 8s maybe slow plays. I, I don't know. But I, th I think in any case, you need to be taking your time a bit with sizing here in a 3-bet pot. If you're only using the sizing, you're not really able to deploy that profitable a raise with something like jacks or queens that you might want to raise sometimes as well right so i think you're really driving down your own raise frequency here with the sizing and actually you're gonna end up like over bluffing for the sizing if you're not careful so i don't know i think just the the sizing i would deploy against half pot here would be much smaller in a three bet pot i don't think this is an ev loss as such with this hand but it's just kind of again indicative of a bit of a unconstructed strategy snap call Nice. Got him. By four, you can open and cut off. Good. And against this three bet, you can probably just fold. It's another one of these hands that in later position you want to continue. When you're in earlier position, you want to continue this because you're more live. Here he has more combos of ace five, ace four. I mean, call is not terrible here. It's not, not a dreadful losing call or anything, but I'd probably fold in these positions and call if I was earlier, be more inclined to defend the 10 9 suited there rather than the 5 4. That'd be the opposite if I was under the gun. Similar concept to previously. King Jack, we can let go now. Turn, I would decide what sizing I actually want to build with my range here. Villains should be checking back some over pairs. On this node, like, are you betting big with 8s here? Like, are you just bombing with 9s here? Does that seem like the best sizing? If you're simplifying to one bet size here, I prefer something smaller. I would just lead half pot here. And in leading half pot, I would be able to lead eight, sevens, fives, hands like this really comfortably. I wouldn't have to worry about value towning myself. I think, again, there's not enough thought about the overall strategy here. It's just a very quick two-thirds pot. Two-thirds isn't a disaster here, but it does force you to play tighter than I would like. And I think the exploit here at 100 zoom is probably leading a bit wider than GTO. And that's because the checking range is likely less over pair heavy and more race king heavy than we would like and therefore I actually prefer just like half pot with I, th I think one third's a little small out of position here it's okay but it maybe doesn't quite accomplish everything I want to with a hand like eights I think I'm basing my sizing around hands like nines and eights here because I have these so incredibly often I don't have a 10 that much I four bet or fold most of my 10x pre so again just think about if I'm simplifying to one bet size what does my strategy want me to do what are the value hands in my strategy that I'm betting and building it from there so yeah, it's not that Matt's making like big EV losses here, but he is acting a little bit thoughtlessly for my liking. So think, you know, when you're trying to improve at poker, you can't 
use in gameplay as a training method, as a way of cementing what you've been studying if you don't think you're literally creating with your own timing, a big disconnect between out-of-game study, which I know this player's done a lot of, and in-game play, the implementation of these concepts that you've learned. You really have to take your time in-game so that you can bridge the gap between theory and practice. It's super important. Very common leak um, amongst my students, actually. So opening this hand, um, a7-4, I'd play a very low check frequency. Sorry, very fairly low bet frequency on this board. The danger zone here, if you like, for your range's EV being ruined, textually speaking, is around the three, which is its sort of amber card, right? Not like a red alert card, but like an amber alert card. Four, five, six, and seven are red alert cards. They're very good for a big blind. And eight is like an amber card as well. Deuce is green, anything above nine is green is good for you. But ace is kind of shared, right? Like he has a lot of ace x here also. So, so yeah, I think we want to be checking a lot here on average on this board, probably doing something like 35% c-bet, 30% c-bet, something like that. Hand will bet maybe slightly more than the global frequency, but not much more with a, a good top pair and some, some backdoor straight draws, probably betting this hand around 40 to 50% of the time. I don't mind playing this around global, actually, though. He is sort of doing some big betting here. This is very strange. I don't really understand the sizing on this board. Um, the thing is here, like, um, yeah, I don't really know how to even make sense of this bet because, like, when you think about your opponent's range here, it's incredibly polarized. There's just a lot of rubbish in there. Garbage hands like Queen Jack, Queen Nine, Jack Nine, Jack Eight, etc. King Five, King Six, King Nine, King Ten. The list goes on. Then we have some very strong hands, ace x, ace 7, ace 4, 4 7s. We don't have a whole lot of mediocre hands. Villain doesn't have kings through 10s here that would merge his range. You have these hands. Your range is more merged than your opponent's range here. So using a big sizing where your opponent's range is more polarized than your own range doesn't really make any sense. Yes, you have more combos of ace, king, ace, queen. If you want to head to the very top of the polarization, Spectrum, you have more of that, but you also just have way more mediocre stuff like bad ASX off, which he's going to 3-bet pre as a bluff sometimes, and also, and most importantly, your range is drowning in 8s through kings, a region that's very sparsely present in his range, if at all. Therefore, your range is less polar than your opponent's and you want to use a smaller bet. I don't like the sizing, I think sizing is definitely something Matt needs to study and revise, I know that we've talked about that in in the past, so you need to go ahead and, and revise bet sizing and relative range polarity. I know you get this stuff out of game because I've spoken to you about it. I've seen your work on that. You've submitted stuff in my school on that, right? If you don't mind me saying, but you're not applying it in game. And there's a huge disconnect here between the theory that you've put so much work into learning and what you're actually clicking at the tables. And that's a real shame. So we want to address that. We want to really work on that aspect of getting in game to represent out of game a bit more. I don't mean to be harsh, but it is a shame to not spend the time to really try to apply what you've been learning. Um, sixes, we go for a bet on this. Do we go for a bet on this swap? Let me just rewind here. We go for three bet. I don't think this is going to make it in there at any frequency. Maybe it's a trace. Maybe it's break even. I don't know. Maybe we have a read here as well that this player is too tight to three bet, so in which case this becomes slightly winning, I would imagine. But... Ace King calling, button versus cutoff. I think this is going to be a tiny trace. You have rolled a 97. So I am going to assume that that means that you play passively. But again, if we look at this, let me just look at his behavior here. Open. Okay, villain's taking his time. Three bets. This is on 1.5x speed. Looks at the RNG, spins the RNG, and then acts. Okay, so we have mixed a bit of call in there on a high roll. Okay. Sixes. Check, check. I don't like. I think you should just be range betting a check deuce. It's incredibly good for you. It's probably just the case that you need to study flop strategy and sizing. There's a lot of misplay going on on the flop. This is a flop that's so good for your range a check deuce that when we check here, our good hands don't make very much money because this villain checks the turn here, as you see. That's an action he should be taking incredibly often. Villain should not be leading the turn at much of a frequency here, and that's because when your range is so strong, you're not meant to garner much EV by slow playing your hand because your opponent's incentivized to check it at a very high frequency on the next street because you're going to retain your range advantage by checking. So this means that when you have a value hand, you actually want to do a lot of betting. It means that when you have a bluff or a protection slash bluff such as sixes, 
your fold equity is far above what we call the pot odds norm, the amount that would cause you to break even by betting absolute air that had no equity. So in this case, 25% for one third pot. If you bet one third pot here, you probably get about 45, 50% fold equity in GTO. And that means that betting with your bluffs is highly incentivized because the fold equity is more than that norm. Betting for value is highly incentivized when you have a value hand because he's not going to put the money in for you in these spots. And betting for denial is very important too because when you give your opponent realization here, as you do with sixes, you let him realize some equity with some with some hand. I don't I don't know. This is more of a bluff, right? But like maybe he folds like I don't know, it doesn't really have many gutters here. It doesn't really fold King Queen. Okay, so bad example with sixes, but say when you check with tens here, for example, and your opponent realizes equity with sevens, there's not really an upside to that, because he's never betting sevens on the turn, right? So you don't really gain anything in these big range advantage spots by slow playing your hand. So I think we need to just simplify to betting a quarter or betting a third with everything here. Big range advantage to us, but we don't have a large polarization advantage because our opponent does have jacks, does have ace jack suited, and doesn't really have kings and queens, and we do, and those are gonna those are gonna merge our range, right? Similar to the blind versus blind spot. So we definitely like to see a bet there. On the turn, you're very low down in your range. There's no question that you can start bluffing this hand. I don't think this has the showdown value to make it into the pure check zone. I think that would be more like tens. I think six is this high frequency bet, but you can also check. And wait until river, probably. You do have king, queen, king, ten here, but you bet these a lot. So I like bluffing here. I think this is fine. I would build a big bet here. I might even go bigger than that because having checked flop, I think you're just reopening a really polar range at what's now a bigger SBR relative to the time left in the hand. On the flop, the SBR is the same as it is in the turn, but not relative to how much time is left for pot growth in that hand. Ace queen ten eight. We check here with ace king. Villain checks back. I agree with building just a big bet size here. I think this hand can bet or check. Value betting seems okay with the king of diamonds. Otherwise, quite thin, but okay. Um, with the king of diamonds, it's certainly fine to value bet. But I think you should be mixing here. I don't know if you rolled. I think you should do a bit of check with this hand as well, although it does strike me as a hand that has a relatively high betting frequency. In practice, I prefer betting to checking here because I think the 100 zoom pool will do a very bad job of checking back this flop and then finding bluffs on a soaking wet for medium to high card texture such as this one. The bluffs here are very, very hard to find for the untrained eye and a lot of people that frequent this pool without disrespect haven't studied enough GTO to find the bluffs in this sort of situation, which would be Jack-10, jacks nines stuff like that and i just don't think people are always doing that so i think are doing that enough so i think actually betting here is my choice if someone is under bluffing you do want to value bet more thinly because bluff catching is going to go down in ev as your alternative line goes down in ev the line you're considering goes up relatively river i think block is an option here i think check is an option here um, again, I prefer block, same idea, I think it's going to be under bluff, I would just bet and hope to get called, I bet like quarter pot, I think checking and turning your hand into a bluff catcher against a pool that's likely very, very strongly under bluffing this river is bad. Now that we face this bet, this is really difficult, I think I would jam, and the reason I would jam is that villain's range is just super capped, we have the king of diamonds blocker, we block two pair and top set, Um, we unblock we probably block some folds as well with the ace here though, so like maybe it's not the best combo like blocking ace king. Probably we'd rather have something like king queen. That way we'd unblock things like ace king ace jack. But I think in practice, if you shove here, it's gonna be really, really fucking difficult for your opponent to find a call because he's capped his range quite considerably. You have the nut blocker to the only thing you could slow play, like the royal or whatever. And I think you you can just leverage very high fold equity with the jam here. I think villain's range is primarily ace king two pair. I think you have a value chopper here. If you call, you'll sometimes chop with ace king. I don't think you'll ever win. I don't think ace jack gets the bet the sizing on the river here. So I think this is just shove probably. But fold is if I was if I wasn't gonna shove, I'd probably just fold here. Yeah, I like shove. I like that you're thinking about it. At least you're between shove and fold here. But if you're not shoving this, like what you ever check shoving, you know, like what's your royal flush gonna be balanced with? It's got to be a hand like this, right? You wouldn't have bet king-queen on the turn, so come to think of it, you don't have that hand, so you wouldn't be mixing bluff with that. So this is your bluff. This is your guy. I don't like call. I think call is the worst line. It's a very under bluff spot, and you have a hand that at best chops with a value bet. Maybe Pio calls there. Maybe it's an okay bluff catcher in theory. I don't think they're finding the bluffs in that texture. Big problem, right? Revisit that one. I think that's misplayed.